welcome to our new Mick Artistic Ego podcast. We'll be bringing you chats, insight, nonsense, laughter, music and a few surprises. You can find out about our current activities, gigs, release news at mickartistic.com and on Facebook at Mick Artistic's Ego Trip, as well as plenty of footage on our YouTube channel. And you can follow us on Twitter at Mick Artistic, at Johnny Ego Trip and at Ego Trip News. Today's guest is Cathal Smith, more famously known as Chaz Smash. She was a member of British ska band Madness from the beginnings in 1976 until 2014. In 2015, he released his first solo album, A Comfortable Man. The album reached number 10 on the independent music chart and Times newspaper named it their album of the week. On today's podcast, we talk about Ireland, Iraq, flute playing, Pilates, Glastonbury being the best fest, going on Zen retreats, bringing kids on tour with Madness, The Fall and Vitalis, and Chaz gives me a tour of his garden in Ibiza on Zoom. Carl, Chaz Smash, Cathal, McGonagall, Madness. Oh, Carl, 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 whatever you like, whatever you like. Okay. <laughs> nice to be here with you, Mick, and, and hello everyone out there in Zoom land. Yeah, well, it's lovely to, to uh, I've just been listening to um, um, uh, the You're Not Alone. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. My, my, my partner, Kath, she came in, she was out doing something in the kitchen, she said, said, what's that? And she, ah. she's from Hartlepool. She's fairly, oh. you know, she, she's, uh, she's fairly frank in there. She taught me how to swear. She's a oh, oh. witch she is, but, but uh, she, she, came in, she, she came into the room, she says, what's that? I said, oh, that's cow smash. She said, it's beautiful. Thank you. Oh, I, I know, it it's, a, it's, a, it's a very stirring, very um, surprise, because I, I've not been listening to you stuff recently I, I didn't know you were doing kind of I just knew kind of madness and then I heard I heard your voice and it's really bell-like ah oh, thanks very much I mean uh, the uh it's the it, I've only ever done one solo album so it, I did that in uh I think I released it in the end of 2014 or 2015 but anyway anyway I'm very grateful what's what's your what's your wife's name um my, my, well my partner she's called Kath 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 Murphy Gaff Murphy, Spuds. <laughs> I, I have a cousin, Pat Murphy. Yeah, well, she's uh, she's up in the bath now, and uh, she, I was she was she was going to help me, but she's fucked off. She was oh. uh, going to set me up. I wanted to get to, like a double screen, but what the, what people are going to see? They're going to see you, or they're going to see me talking. Then it's going to jump to you. Then it's going to be me talking and jump to you. It's not like it's anyway. I, I don't know how you do that, Mick? You what? I don't know how you do that. Well, you know, good. You know, you know, you know, good to me. <laughs> Here we are, stranded in media land. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, right, love. Well, uh, a little bit of reg. I've just got, I've got stuff written down here. I just scribbled a lot of stuff. Like, um, I put down um, last, the return of the last Palmer Seven. Last oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, and I just. That is so classy. That is so um, cool. I just remember, you know, because it, it, there was no singing. The title's amazing. The title enough is amazing without the, without the music, you know. And I put down here, um, uh, suits, buzz cuts, cool dancing. And I just remember, you know, I mean, all I remember is as sort of uh, a mid-20s kid in Leeds. I remember watching... The, the the shift and the fate and the sway and it's like this bunch of like young uh, forwards footballers you know just going <laughs> through gyrate you know very stylish you know and uh, yeah. and I just uh, I mean I went to see you I saw, I saw the two tone tour back in where, you know, where did you see it where did you see it well in Leeds I mean oh, I, okay, okay. Um, I mean I saw it was like was it the this, limit club was it the limit club in Leeds. No, that was Sheffield. Is that Sheffield? Sheffield, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Where, where was it in Leeds? What was the place there? Uh, um, no, I tell a lie, I didn't. I saw the specials in right. Leeds. And I saw Selector. I might have seen I might have seen the three of you. I'm not sure. We were we, 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 well, we, the three of us, we were doing the tour, you know. I don't know. Maybe we I can't remember. 
It's a long time ago yeah. now. When you first, when you everybody was in fucking suits, everybody was in like kind of amazingly sort of turn ups, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And you were all horse and carts and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yes, but it was, uh, yeah. And I, and I mean, I, I just, I, I wondered where did, where did the sort of, where did Scar come from? Because I, I remember from that time, I mean, I can remember like, there was like punk and then there was power pop and post punk and everybody was listening to sort of um, the fall and bloody orchestral manoeuvres in the dark and, yeah, and bloody yeah, yeah, Spandau yeah. Ballet. And then bloody this Prince Buster and bloody Scar stuff just came out of stage left. How come well, that? How come you? When I, when I was, uh, when I was younger than, than when we were, when the uh, Madness were having it, um, you know, I mean, it was in the charts, you know, Desmond Deck was in the charts and, and uh, Johnny Nash. Um, so uh, I suppose, that, and it, it kind of came from us, us listening to uh, reggae at the, in the youth clubs, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, I mean, I suppose my cousin was into it and he was older than me and I looked up to him. It's probably the same for most of the band. It was, mm -hmm. it was just... We were just at that bit a, a bit later, mm. but it was kind of coincidental, I think. That um, I mean, for us, we were playing it because it was easy to play. We were doing Fats uh, Fats Domino because that was easy twelve bar, and we were doing yeah. we were doing like reggae ska because it was e it was easy to uh, to play simple chord structure. So we so all together we was this North London invaders. We all like Suggs and. Barson and everybody yeah. else, you just changed your name. But basically, it was you lot started together, and when you when you were, you know in the youth clubs and stuff. Well, I mean, no, I mean, I think the music, the, the listening, the music was played in the youth clubs when we were when we were younger. Yeah, um, yeah. we we played that stuff because it was simple. It was simple to rehearse. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, look, I was the original bass player, but I wasn't very good. Mark Bedford became the bass player. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, it's just easier to play. I mean, he was a better player. Um, what I'm saying is, Mark was probably the best musician out, out of the bunch. You know, Mike was right. pretty good, but everyone else was kind of learning. You know, um, yeah. but anyway, and, and the specials. It was just coincidence that they were they were playing, or they were you know they were influenced by the similar stuff. Yeah, but you were all you were all on two tone though, weren't you? Yeah, well, Jerry Dammers, who was uh, the the uh, the keyboard player and the main man uh, in the specials, he he got a deal with Chrysalis to release six singles, and uh, uh, Suggs met 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 um, met him down in London when he played the Open Anchor, which was yeah. over the road from where I used to live then, and. Um, Jerry ended up seeing us, and we ended up with the Prince being on his label. Right. It's two tone two or two tone three. I can't remember. So did you lot get on then? Was there, um, or, or was there yeah, a kind I mean, of a, was there like football competing football teams? Was there a bit it, of a? It was definitely competitive, um, in as much as we were competing with everyone. I mean, when we supported the Pretenders at the Lyceum. We wanted to blow them off, you know. You just did yeah, when you, yeah. you just do when you were young, but you must yeah. know, yeah. you know. But um, so uh, yeah. But on the tour bus, it was like just one big. It was a. It was uh, what was it like? I mean, it was a. It was there was a feeling of um, being a part of something bigger than ourselves, you know. Yeah. You know, it was uh, yeah, it was a great feeling of camaraderie on the tour bus because we're all together on one bu one bus. So did one, you? We, did you pick stuff up off, uh, you know, like pick up some tips and maybe some? Uh... No, really, no, no, no. We're all we all each band had their own sort of vibe. Yeah, their own, sound, their, own their own. Um... But you weren't doing any magpie thing of just kind of oh, yeah, oh, that's that's I like what they're doing there. I'll just borrow a bit of that or oh, no, that's how we play. No, not really. I mean, I no. think the only thing that we probably probably tried to do was to be more energetic than the other bands, you know? But I mean, everyone was doing the same thing. Every, I mean, the performance, I mean, you know, okay. Terry Hall, the singer in the, the specials, he was very loush in his performance, very yeah, good, yeah, yeah. laid back. But, you know, um, 
but the band as a whole had that electricity, you know, so yeah. the, all three did, all three had a, had a, it was like attack, you know, make show. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. All right. Right. Well, okay, thank you very much. That's enough. That'll do. That's no, no, no. I've got another hour to go. Yeah. <laughs> we've not no, we finished yet. No, we fuck. We've got loads. Okay, that's like twenty yeah. minutes. How do we do that? <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of, uh, I was scanning some stuff this morning and just uh, um, reading about like um, you were living in, you went to, you were living in, you were born in London, in some yeah. litter area or some, some really. Uh, but you moved to Ireland, and you were you went I'm to well, you were ten. I was born into Ireland on good British soil in the parish of Marlebone. There came ah. the child of life. Um, right. I was born yeah. in a, a, a Middlesex hospital, which of course now is like luxury flats, but uh, back mm. then it was uh, off Tottenham Court Road. Um, and, uh, and we moved back and forth, Ireland, a few different places. Lived in Iraq, Iran. Um, in the 60s and, and, and 70s, uh, yeah. So what was, your, what was your dad doing that you were working in? Yeah, that was, it. That was a, a, a petroleum engineer, you know, he was, in, he was, right. in, okay. he was an engineer really, procurement engineer. He did, uh, yeah, he was a funny geezer actually, you know. So he's, he's still alive, your dad? No, he died, Lord mercy, in, in uh, 60, in 19, uh, well, I can't remember what the dates are now. When did he die? 1996, he passed away. Yeah. All right. Well, God rest him anyway. Yeah. yeah. My, I, I lost my dad um, uh, 12 years ago, and he was uh, he was like 91, he was in there. Wow, what an amazing age. Yeah, he was, uh, me and him had a very um, uh, tricky, really difficult relationship for years. Uh, he was um, really sort of uh, quite rigid and quite... Uh, um uh, let's see he was like a rock he didn't drink he, he took a vow when he was a kid he was a pioneer he took the pledge, he took the he pledge. Took the pledge yeah well, yeah so i mean there was one time when he was uh um uh, he, he, he was uh, lost in the snow when he was like maybe in his about 19 or 20 and they found him in the in the snow and he was basically like uh uh, nearly, he was going to die of exposure and like, half a dozen lads got round him you know and they found him and then one of them uh Opened a bottle of brandy to try and stuff to put in it, and he got up and beat the shit out of them all. <laughs> he you know what, my, my my great grandfather, he stopped in Kilkenny in Ireland. He stopped a runaway horse and carriage, and the woman uh, who was in the carriage jumped, uh, was hysterical, and kicked him in the bollocks. And uh, and he died from it, but they offered him brandy and he took the pledge and he wouldn't touch a drop when he ended up dying. He ended um, up dying from, from what being kicked in the balls. Well, maybe it was the horse that kicked him in the bollocks, not the horse. Uh, but, yeah. um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Ireland, isn't it? It's, uh, as, yeah. as I like to say, my dad never hit me once. It was always a combination, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's funny. I'm uh, I I, um, I did a little interview just before Christmas for this uh, this uh, guy called Des Hurley. He was a fiddle player in Leeds, and he was oh, wow. he's doing a project about from Leitrim to Leeds and about kind of the culture of like Ireland coming over here and about sure. young Irish people coming over in the sixties and uh, yeah. the way that rock and roll hit them and and art and the Beatles and all that stuff and. Oh, and how so Massive, massive debt in British pop to yeah. our to our yeah. island. But Definitely. anyway, so, but anyway, Des Hurley was um, he uh, he found a little cassette tape of my dad playing the flute. My dad was a uh, he played six instruments and he was a concert. He played the concert flute and the the pipes, played the the Eulian uh, pipes and the accordion and that. And uh, my dad, wow. uh, my dad uh, was was uh, he was a really accomplished musician. I love Gillian Pipes. I love them. Oh man, amazing! And, and he sold them to this. He, he sold them to on uh, online. Yeah. Uh, to uh, to somebody in Chicago. Yeah. Uh, he got to. Uh, he got he got about three and a half thousand for them.
Anyway, <laughs> love a bit of but, love a bit of alien pipes. Yeah, but, but anyway, but, uh, my biggest mate of mine, Des, he, uh, he yeah. found this old tape, and it was my dad playing in this place called the Town and Country in Leeds. What was he playing? He was playing the he was playing the flutes with my dad. Oh, wow, wow, wow. And, uh, wow. and he was playing with Des and all his mates from 1991, March the 16th, 1991. Wow. My dad was like 73, and wow. he just... He just flew through a few jigs and a few reels and stuff. And um, <laughs> anyway, Des has, has made this little program that's going out online from Leeds to Leeds, and it's right. coming out shortly. And he, he just came across these, this lovely mute. So I've just made a copy for my mum. Lovely. Like, my mum's 83, and uh, I've made a few copies. And, uh, and it's just strange because um, the flute takes a bit of lung power. And my that's... dad was like 73, but he sounded like a 19-year-old man. You know, he's just flying over the keys, you know. So, and it was, we, I've just, uh, one of my brothers is uh, in um, the hospital with COVID. And he, oh, had, he, ended, up, he ended up on a ventilator about a week ago. And all of us are just in the wars, me mum and I'm one of seven. So every, everybody is like really kind of frightened. How, how, is, he, how is he getting on? Yeah, well, he's, he, he opened his eyes this morning. He went in last Thursday to put him on a ventilator. And he, well, he, he flo- and he and he squeezed the nurse's finger, and like basically everybody's just fucking. What's his name? Annoyed. My brother's called Joe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, so everybody's kind of uh, we're all struggling, and I've no idea where that tr- where that was going. That uh, that line of conversation, you know. Well, we went from family to flute to lungs to the brother. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Lungs. No, there's, you know, no, there's you, something in between. You, there's something in between the lungs and and the brother. <laughs> well, it was the flute. The fa- your father being able to blow the flute. At, yeah, at, yeah. Because he, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Having good having a good lungs. So then your brother Joe be, being in, having COVID and being on the ventilator. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's anyway. But, but it was it, fine. It's not as good as your dad. <laughs> what? I got the link. What? I found the link, Chad. It's uh, <laughs> the link is that. We're all so bloody happy, and I can yeah. give my mum this this uh, this uh, CD of me dad, yeah. and that'll give her another, uh, another. Well, yeah, just it's like a little Easter egg now, you know, an early Easter egg. I mean, it's like a time capsule from the past coming unexpectedly, isn't it? How beautiful! Yeah, yeah well, it's, it's yeah, it just came. It, it's like a, a a shock, a rude shock to sure. just kind of like wake us all up. Sure. Uh, so, uh, is your family okay? You, have, you, have you been touched by this plague? Uh, we, my uh, my son's partner, her auntie was in, in Ireland. She's she's been ill, uh, but she recovered. Um, thank God, no, no, the family's been okay. I mean, my I mean, my um, my cousin is actually working in an ICU ward, um, and uh, she she was. She was working on the ward the first time round back in March, and she went back on the ward again um, on the COVID ward uh, about two weeks ago. And uh, she she's had a tough year. It's been hard, and she, uh, you, you know, I mean, you know, all all kinds of hours, eight hours in a Hamzat suit on the ward, yeah. not being able to go to the toilet. I mean, it's been tough. Mm-hmm. When when it started out in in. In March of last year, her, the team leader said, one of you is going to die, you know, on her team. I mean, it was like, you know, full on. But uh, thank God she, as, as she's okay and, and her sister's uh, in, in medicine as well. So, yeah, yeah. They, it's tough. It's tough for them. Yeah. You know, but they're, yeah. they're great. And, Amazing, yeah. And, and we, uh, we're sort of, um, well, I feel, I'm like myself, I feel like I'm just a, a watcher. I'm 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 set back, and uh, I've just done a bit of Pilates and I'm oh, really? doing this. Yeah, I just started to do Pilates a few months ago. So I'd never done it before, and uh, I used to, I'm a runner. I used to go out doing marathons and stuff, and okay. run down the canal and stuff. And uh, my knee, I lost my knee. Well, my knee, I started to get arthritis in it, and so right. me my girlfriend said, "What? Well, well, come and do some Pilates on a Zoom here, because everybody's really? on Zoom." So I just I'm, I'm in the kitchen. I'm sorry, in the living room here with a shorts on just doing cats and up a dog and down with dog whatever you know that's uh, it's good. Sugar. sorry that's yoga isn't it Do- down with dog and all that yeah, no, but that's part of pilates as well 
Oh, is it? Oh, I didn't yeah, realize. Yeah. Pilates is like a, a kind of a, an amalgam of like yoga and another sort of flower. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's sort of a some I think it was a German guy who sort of the sort German of dance guy for da German dancers, yeah. Yeah, well, he, some some guy took took all the best bits of various exercises and you know, including yoga and smart move. Right, yeah. the core. It's all about the core. Absolutely, my core. Yeah, I, I smoked months ago. My core's a bit enlarged, shall we say? Yeah, well, it's it's. The thing is, we're, we're, we're here we are, we're bubbles in bubbles. We're like, yeah, yeah, we're like yeah, little yeah, bubbles yeah, in yeah. big bubbles. It doesn't matter what we look yeah. like now. We can do what we like. We can become blobs. <laughs> we're allowed to be blobs. <laughs> <laughs> There's no blobs. gigs for like another year or something, whatever. And Glastonbury's yeah. just finished. And, uh, yeah, well, Glastonbury's finished. Yeah, I, I, I saw that yesterday. Mm. I saw uh, that yesterday. It's uh, we we played we played the last fourteen Glastonburys. It was wow. whatever it was. Uh, Two thousand and seven we started, and we'd never played a festival before. And I just right. I sent a CD to to somebody. I sent it to one of the tents, and it just toured the tent, and it went around all the tents. This little CD. <laughs> Nobody seemed to know what to do with it. They're saying, "Oh, I don't know if it's it's not really uh, don't know." And it, it did about three tours, so. Anyway, about nine months later, we got a call saying, oh, uh, you can come and play in our tent. We, we've liked your CD. We've, we've been playing it, and it's nice. So, we, played <laughs> it. so uh, we, we got a, like a foot in the door and played at this place called yeah, the Avalon. What, what tent was it? The Avalon Cafe Stage okay. up in the green fields. So oh, just, just one of the smaller ones up in the green area. Whatever yeah, it is. It's great to be part of it, isn't it? Oh, man. I, was, I got... So, so, when when I when I first uh, got divorced from my from well, separate from my wife, uh, yeah. my two mates said uh, we're going to take you to Glastonbury, and I said I'm not going anywhere. I said I'm 40 year old. I've got two small kids. I'm not going off to see any crusties and dogs on ropes and stuff. And uh, no, no idea. Anyway, they, they dragged me off to Glastonbury and they got me working in the car park, and I brought myself I brought a nice old tweed suit and a cardigan and some bedroom slippers. And I went mental in the car park. I don't know what happened, but I was selling cornflakes to the to the drivers and stuff. I said, come and get some Kellogg's. Come on. And I don't know what happened, but uh, and uh, there was so much stimulation. There's so yeah. much kind of going on. And I just went off army box with uh, with joy. I thought, like, this is for like me. A, it's like a pagan festival, isn't it? Well, it, it's like, a, it's just, isn't it, for adults, isn't it? It's um, mad, you know. It's great. I think it's it's the one one festival that it's acceptable for you to get, get off your head at. You know, you know, mm -hmm. just have fun. Yeah, it's a brilliant festival. Yes. Well, anyway, it's uh, um, it's not happening, and um, so we're just. Uh, so what 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 are you doing? What are you doing? Or what have you been doing over over the last sort of year then? The last year, I, think, well, I mean, I, your habits obviously have changed. So, what's what? what not you, really, not really. No, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty much, I'm, I'm off under radar completely. I live in the countryside. I don't go out much. I don't see that many people. Um, I'm, I'm in Spain, so I look forward to my kids visiting. Of course, that didn't happen this year. I've just come back from uh, on, on Wednesday. I came back from two months in the UK so I could be with my... I, 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 I went and quarantined with one son for a month. Yeah. Stayed with him for a month. Then I, I then I went to London so I could see my, my son and daughter. And how um, old are they? Huh? How old are they? How old are your children? My, my oldest, Casper, is 33. Yeah. Uh, he, and and he's, he's had a son, so I was... Hanging out with my grandson uh, Grayson, who's like eighteen months, and it's like again, again, again. You know, I did it. I had a grey car, yellow car, red car. Brilliant. <laughs> and uh, and I uh, and uh, him and his partner Neve. She's from Kilkenny, where my dad was from. Yeah. Anyway, uh, and I was with uh, yeah. So Milo, my second son, who was up, he's in in Oxfordshire. Him and his missus Sonia. That, uh, he's a, they're both really good cooks. I mean, it's really nice to be wanted but to, yeah. to hang out by your kids, you know? So yeah. I had a nice time with him. What walking. you say, it's really nice to be wanted by your kids. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. definitely, yeah. 
And then yeah. uh, my daughter, she's she's uh, she's 26 on the 3rd of March. So uh, yeah, they're they're all grown, but yeah, they're great. I, I'm, I'm I like to say that my children are my success. You know, the, my relationships with yeah. them is, is is the best thing in the world. You know, it's brilliant. Brilliant being a dad. You so know? what was it? What was it like when uh, when they were when when you were you know treading the boards when you're out kind of when they were a lot younger? How how, how he is? What, what kind of dad were you then when they were small? Well, well, the first time round they weren't born, so they were they were I think they were maybe like five and seven or four and six. The two boys when madness reformed. Let's see, my. Yeah, I think it was like 91, 92 when we came back. And Casper, mm -hmm. I think, he was born in, I think, 86. So he'd have been like, you know, five or six. So they were, they were I mean, they loved it. I mean, the funny thing was, because we stopped for six years, when the kids were, 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 you know, were around four or five, I, I played the videos. I hadn't watched the videos for years. And they loved it. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I started bringing kids on for, for uh, Night Boat the Caro. We do it all the gigs now. We bring kids on, you know. But yeah. I start with my kids and Suggs' kids, and uh, and they loved it. I mean, you know, it was great. I mean, I um, I separated from my 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 wife in uh, in uh, two thousand and five. Yeah. And and I brought my uh, my middle son Milo, my daughter, on tour, and that was great fun. Uh, yeah, that was lovely. So I mean, you know, I always wanted to be a dad. You know, I always wanted to be a dad. I loved it. Yeah. It's funny, I, I, when, I, when I became a dad, I, I got a shock uh, and I wasn't, I had no kind of, uh, uh, it was just a shock basically, but I, I fell into, I thought, well, I'll just be myself and I'll just love sure. this child. And I, and, I won't, and I was just thinking I won't be a bully and I won't frighten them and I'll try and be, uh, yeah, and I'll, and I'll be attentive. And I'll, when I was a little boy, uh, when I was, uh, I had like my younger brothers around, I was the eldest. And I used to tell, when we go to bed at night, I'd tell the, my brothers and sisters stories. So they'd ask right. Michael, tell us a story. And I'd make a story up every night in bed. And I could hear them just, I could hear them going off or that Jerry's just gone to sleep. Martin's gone to sleep. And I could just hear them going, I'm thinking. And, then, and I'd be talking about Prince Rupert and, and his magic van and stuff. And, making, and, and I'd tell a new story every night. And that, but I wanted to be, I thought I'm gonna, my kids are gonna, because me and my dad, I was really frightened of my dad, and he was quite scary at times. Don't, don't, don't you think that as a parent, we always try and do better than our parents did? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. We try and do better. Yeah, and then I, I started out with very good intentions, and I, it got a bit, bit difficult at times. But um, I, my my son is thirty one now, and he's uh he's living in uh, Limehouse in London, and my daughter's in the Old Kent Road. Okay. And uh, she just had COVID with, with a partner, and they would just come out at the end of it. Um, wow. But um, they're, um, she, she was a textile designer, and she was working for H&M in Sweden, in Stockholm, for a few oh, years. Nice. And, uh, and they're, um, they're, both of them said to me just before Christmas, they said, Dad, um, me and uh, Seb have been looking at your website and stuff and your, your social media stuff, and uh, we, we think it, it's really uh, pants. And uh, we, uh, we just said, listen, we, we spent all weekend looking at it and we, we decided we're going to help you and think of us as two top professionals, not as your children, and we work for nothing. So like you said about, it's, it's nice to be loved. Well, I felt oh. so kind of warmed by the fact that they, they, they were going to take care yeah. of me. Yeah, and, exactly. been, and they've been fiddling on the website and my, my daughter's been tweaking photographs and stuff and, and saying, Dad, Dad, don't put all that stuff on Instagram. That's Just cut that out. You don't need to put that in. And you need to cut, put it on a Tuesday night at 6 o'clock because that's when it's peak sort of... So, that, you know, <laughs> whatever. But it's, it's, it's very heartening to... It just, you just feel like you've done, you've done right if uh, you get... You know, someone... You know. I once said you can tell where you are psychologically by the nature of your relationships with others. And if you've got a great relationship with your kids, job done. Job uh, done. Okay. Yeah, well, that's it. I, I go to sleep at night and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm basically I'm a born warrior. I bite my nails right. and stuff. I'm really anxious and stuff. But I sleep like a baby. And I, I because uh, none of my children, I've just been talking to my older daughter, she's 48. 
sorry, 42. And uh, she's a, a singer. Uh, she sings R&B. She was, well, she's not anymore, but she's... Uh, uh, yeah, it's just lovely. They all sort of ring up and I, I, I'm keeping them in the loop. And, and, yeah. and they come and watch me. They come and watch me play. And my son, who's my son is into hip hop. Uh, they're all, uh, uh, they, the mums were black. I've got, you know, three black kids. And, and the mums, my son, he was into, he used to do a blog about the uh, politics of hip hop when he was 14 or 15 in Ipswich. And he knew yeah. all about death records and about fucking uh, uh, Jay Z and, and uh, Nas and Ja sure. and all these people. And, and, he, and he hated what I did. He thought I was, dad, dad. Don't do that stuff with straws. Stop wearing them stupid clothes, Dad. Please, don't come to school. Don't come to school wearing them trousers, Dad. And stop skipping. Stop <laughs> skipping, Dad. <laughs> so, but now he comes to see me. Oh, now he's great. 31 and he stands at the back and he's like six foot three, the big black man. Stands at the back of the room. Stands at the back of the room there like a big wall, like a big wardrobe. What's his name? His name's Sebastian. Oh, oh that's my... My second son's Milo Sebastian. Yeah, yeah, love yeah. But they, they come to see me, and uh, he's a big Leeds fan as well, is Seb. And he takes right. me to Leeds matches every when he comes up to Leeds now and again. And uh, it's oh. it's great. And, what, and, and what's he doing with himself? Seb, he, well, he sells advertising space on the net. Okay. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> I know, like, yeah, I don't know. He, he works with big companies, and he, he introduces big companies to little companies. So they're a little company like a anyway. It's and well, he's, was, he's as long as he's happy, great. He's fine. No, the thing is, they're all you know sorted. Yeah, I don't no, know. No. I, I'm, I've had no kind of issues, and I'm. I was really worried that I thought I'm going to end up with like you know there might be somebody who has a drink problem or a junkie or whatever this that and the other. And my kids have uh, have managed to get to 30, 31, 40. And this sort of steady, so it's like job done. Yeah, it's a blessing. Yeah, it's yeah. A blessing. because I think you know we, we beat ourselves up because we just see our, our our own frailties, and we think how could we do anything good? How could we produce anything strong and and uh, yeah. and uh, and noble? And we yeah. because we just see ourselves as as um, just as wrecks, you know. And, and we're not, you know, we just we just would say everybody's a wreck, you know. We, we just have to we keep going no one's perfect yeah <laughs> where are we now 40 20 minutes uh, 20 oh, minutes well let me, see. let me see let me check my watch 20 minutes you're right yeah i noticed that you were uh, i remember listening to a radio 4 program it was maybe about 10 years ago and it uh, you were talk you were on an interview and you were talking about um, uh, being, I think, in the bathroom or something, and and uh, uh, possibly talking about tea, uh, tr meditation or something. All right. And you just you were just saying how uh, I, I remember it was because it, it, it stirred me because it 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 wasn't you know my my impression of you was is this kind of this mad crazy sort of. Uh, yeah. Maverick. I mean, you know, your, your style and everything was really kind of interesting. I really like yeah. the way you put through stuff together. It was like watching, uh, um, you know, something like Viv, Viv Westwood's son or something. You know, you right. threw stuff together. You know, and and then you, you were in this interview and you sounded very kind of uh, very kind of downbeat and quite subdued and quite reflective. And it was a, quite a reflect and. It just seemed to, because it wasn't madness. It was yeah. very, it was very much like kind of uh, Lent. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it was there was just a you know you were just talking about how you you didn't need uh, the the phone and this that and the other and uh, that uh, you uh, there's something about finding a place of stillness anyway. And it just and I was quite surprised you know because. It, but anyway, I just read his stuff about you doing transcendental meditation, and I, I dabbled. I dabbled in TM, but 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 only for a short while. Mm. I, I used to go on on the retreats, Buddhist retreats, with uh, with Mike, our keyboard player. Yeah, uh, 
I went to, uh, we were in Japan and I picked up, in the, in the hotels in Japan, it's a bit like the Gideon's Bibles in the West. They have, they have the Eightfold Noble Path, you know, the, 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 the Buddhist yes. thing. Mm -hmm. So I picked that up and it was interesting. And I came back to London, went to a Zendo for a bit, got interested in Zen. And then, and then Mike, our keyboard player, he was into a, a, a group called Rigpa, which was a Tibetan Nyingma sort of uh, tradition. And I used to go to that with him. I went on a few retreats with him. And uh, yeah, I think, um, I think uh, there's a beautiful spot in all of us, that soft spot that we find hard to show people. We, mm. And sometimes we have difficulty nurturing. And uh, for me, to be, to be really honest, to have peace of mind and to feel contentment, to me is, is amazing. You know, that's, a, that's, that's a, a kind of beautiful thing, you know? Mm. Do you, I, you, feel, you feel sort of at peace with yourself? You think you're, you're going through a peaceful time at the moment in your life? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Life is amazing, you know. Um, I mean, I'm older now, so... Yeah, I, 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 I think that helps. I think the fact that I've, I've become, whatever, I'm 65, I was 65 last in May, and, and I can feel myself as a sort of a, as a nice old man. Yeah, I mean, you see a lot of old folk, old men and women, and they basically have a nice. They, they, they look like they've, they've got it sorted. There's a lot of them you see, and they've got kind of a, a, a lovely expression on the face. They can't, be, they can't be surprised by anything. They, you know, I mean, they've seen it all. Exactly. I mean, you know what? You know, you know what life's like. So, uh, you know, life throws curveballs, but you know, you sort of get used to it, and it's like it is as it is. You know, yeah. I, don't know, yeah, I don't know if with age we all become sort of stoic, you know, to an extent, you know. Mm. No, it's great. I think the fact is that it's such a surprise life because I never expected to sort of have like dentures and I never expected to have sort of uh, <laughs> no hair. And, uh, <laughs> and I still feel there's a clash of me being like, there's a 14 year old in here that's going, what happened to all my flesh? You know, you know, I am reminded of my age because of my body, but my mind still feels like, you know, like a, a, a bit like a, a, you know, oh, I don't know, somewhere maybe it's between 25 and 30, 36, maybe. I don't know. Do you well, know what I mean? I still feel, yeah, I still feel uh, bubbly and effervescent sometimes in my thinking, yeah. you mm. know, and it's quietable. But generally, generally I'm sort of pretty level, you know? Yeah. Good, Which is good. Right. <laughs> right, well, yeah, I, I, I think, you know, I mean, um, I, 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 I've done a bit of antidepressants and stuff and because uh, I've had them recently and, and they have kind of uh, helped. How did you find that? I found it all right. You know, I'm on a very, very small dose, whatever, and uh, it sort of uh, keeps me... Keeps me like anxious. I've got my books coming up and uh, my accounts to finish, and I'm like, I basically, I, I used to go through fucking uh, nightmares about my books, but uh, I think the, the a little bit of it's the the the, the tablets give me a little bit of help to kind of keep uh, uh, calmer, and so I can get on and do stuff, you know. And uh, initially, I was quite sort of, uh, I think I was initially, uh, I didn't want to do it because it felt kind of emasculating or. Felt like, oh, I can't, you know, I don't need to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna strong it out. I'll, yeah, I'll yeah, do this, yeah. you know, tablets are for wimps. But uh, the, I went for some therapy, and the woman said, I think you need to just try it. Get, and I said, What, you know, just I said, there's nothing wrong with having a little chemical tweak. Yeah. You know, I had to, I had to, I had to have uh, radiotherapy for a tumor I removed. All so, right. I, so I, uh, I, I, I went and got. Got on some antidepressants just to lift my mood, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't want to go into the pits, and of course, you know, you've got to take them for a year. So I did a year, and then I stopped. But um, yeah, yeah. You, well, you kind of you, you you get a kind of a, a bell goes off. You think, no, I'm all right now. I've, I've done me uh, done me stints. And, uh, I, think, yeah, I totally get the anxiety thing over stuff. I mean, I, you know, I, I get anxious over going into, into my own bank to get my own bloody money out. You know, you know, just, I don't know, whatever. But, you know, mm. uh, as someone said to me, you know, you're either in the, the fear, it's either fear or love. You know, if you're in the fear body, everything's a bit, you know. Mm. Fear or love. 
Yeah, it's either fear or love. Either fear love. Or, yeah, and and it's good coming out of it's good coming out of. Um, I know on the morning when I wake up and I, um, I think oh, I hate mornings, and then I kind of uh, I, I say a little prayer, and that sorts me out. And then I kind of uh, I'm less frightened, and I yeah, can, yeah. I can just wade into the day, and I think I'm I can, and and I'm less kind of thinking oh well I've, oh there's all this to do I know there's like me this old head comes in and says well you can do three things today you can sort out the house. Clean, yeah, yeah, yeah. cleaning and you can put a wash on and you can maybe do some uh, do some emails and that's enough for you you know you don't you know just, sort of, just tell you don't do too much you don't have to do too much yeah. i think the other thing is that it's very natural for 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 for, for uh, us humans to rerun on negative pat negative loops mm. so i always i always think of my kids I, i'm you know i think i've been grateful you know, I'm generally though my, my thinking is pretty good these days. Mm -hmm. so I think when you you know if, if you've had a bit of depression or whatever, then you know it's all about the headquarters. It's all about it's all about the head stuff. You yeah. know, yeah. So you start learning little techniques and that to keep 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 a lift. You know, like oh keep hold on, yeah, yeah. Stop in the chain, listen to the critic. Stop it. You know. Yeah, but you sometimes need people to tell you, and you know, like a therapist or oh. somebody just to say. Uh, you're in it. You don't know you're in it. No, you know I'm yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I remember going to my doctor once, and he said, "What do you do?" And I said, "Well, I lie on my sofa, I read books, I smoke dope, and I watch videos." He goes, "You're depressed." I'm like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you do when you do? You, uh, are you uh, in uh, sort of in the middle of the country, or are you on the coast, or what? I'm right in the middle of the country. I'm in the countryside. It's it's uh, where are you? It's very windy. Chad. I'm, where? In, I'm in uh, I'm in Ibiza, in uh, outside outside a little a village, a beautiful village called Santa Gertrudis. Whereas right. my kids, Santa Get Rudy. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it, it. I mean, look, I'll show you. It's lovely. It's just you know, it's a bit. It's, it's very. It's quite windy today. It's windy over here as well. See? Yeah, but we've got uh, some storm or something like Storm Jetty or something happening. Yeah, there. right. Okay. No, it's very it's nice. nice. It's bright. There's, a, there's all the flowers here. There's all the flowers. Yeah, there. yeah. Oh, lovely. Cacti. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know, are you a gardener? Uh, not really. I stick stuff in pots and I water it, you know? I mean, yeah. you know, this is it here. I mean, it's it's all you know. Yeah. You can't go wrong with a spider. You can't go wrong with a spider plant. They grow like crazy, you know. So yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, there's Excellent. me chopping going. Ah, oh, it's lovely, eh? What's that? What's, the, what's them bells? That's the chimes up there. Look, all you. right. Oh, can you see? It? Right. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lovely, yeah. Good tune. Yeah, that, I think we're in C. Is if I play the guitar, it sort of it, it, it will sort of it fits in. They fit in. But it's windy. It's cold. It's cold. All right. Is that, a, like, is that a roll neck there. jumpy you've got on, Chad? What? Is that a roll neck jumpy you've got on there? Jewels, mate. Just ah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. The, this is it. Yeah, the work. The work for the older man. <laughs> with tattoos, you know, cut here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man anyway listen it's been lovely talking to you uh, I oh, think it's, yeah ten to, um, can you um, can you give us um, I, I ask people what um, what music they've uh, they could recommend to the people on the ego pod and it can be like an album or a single what, what, what's, uh, what's what, what's floated your boat in the last few days in the last few days I've been listening to a collective called Salt, S A U L T, yeah. because they've got this song called Little Boy, and it makes me think about my grandson. But I got the, I downloaded the album. I think the album's called Rise. Uh, really, kind of soul vibe. But what's really floated my boat recently is Aldous Harding. Uh, I think she's brilliant. Um, uh, the album's, I think it's called Designer. But I really, really love the lyrics. 
Yeah, What's designer. The album called? What's the album called, Cal? Designer. Designer. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if you go oh. on YouTube, if you go on YouTube or, or Spotify, you can hear the, the 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 sort of the lead song is called "The Barrel," but uh, yeah, brilliant. And then uh, I've been listening to a thing called uh, "Honey Thighs" by uh, Strong Boy, and um, and and Billy No Mates. Uh, oh no, right, yeah, and, Billy No Mates, yeah, yeah. And I like what she's been doing with the sleeve of mods. Yeah. And uh, Pokey Lafarge, let's get fucked up. That's been interesting. And 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 the Fontaines, DC. Oh yeah, yeah, the Irish crowd, yeah. yeah. Okay, along, uh, with Vivaldi, along with some Vivaldi, you know, I love, I like a bit of Vivaldi. Yeah. Have you heard uh, Girls' School? I haven't. Is it good? Yeah, yeah. That's a band. They're, they're kind of a, they're from Northern Ireland, I think, and they're okay. uh, they're they're a bit like the Fall. Very, oh, oh crazy, mate! Crazy, crazy stuff. Oh, you know the Fall. You know, I got crow's feet around my face because I'm living too late. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Yeah, up north. You know, I love, I love a bit of the fall. Oh man, great stuff. Yeah, I know these his lyrics are on t-shirts. Oh man, Mr. 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 Smith. Did, did you ever, did you ever have the uh, cross his path then, or you Gladys in the fall? No, no, not at all, not at all. I mean, I, I, to be honest, I came to him quite late in their career. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'd love to have met him. He said, I mean, you know, what a gnarly, you know, individual. You know, but yeah. he. Fabulous, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I can remember hearing the fall for the first time, and I think for the first six months, I just found them so objectionable and so difficult. And then after a while, uh, I realised that they, uh, there was something indefinable about them. I thought that that that, uh, that I, I thought this is a puzzle I need to solve, it's like a riddle. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and some of the some of the, the language is so kind of um, sophisticated. And, and and yet so kind of crude. I'm thinking, well, like well, poetry, you, know. you, know, you think of the sleep of mods, you know, it's like, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, it, it, it's sort of a bit like when you listen to, to complicated jazz, you've got to figure it out. You've got to figure it mm. out. It doesn't, it doesn't make it easy for you, you know, but, um, but I, I, uh, I liked, I, li I liked his, uh, it's like someone said to me, I said, I said to someone, I suppose it's about going against the grain. And, for, and he said, no, but first you've got to know which way the grain goes. And, you know, and, and, and Marky e. Smith went against the grain with his own inimitable style, you know, and I, mm. I thought amongst everything else, it was just so attractive, you know? Yeah, he was. He was, uh, he was very cool. I mean, uh, if, if nothing else, he dressed like a god. I mean, I just remember seeing him in a safari suit in about 1981 and thinking, he's wearing a bloody safari suit. And he had his, this side comb hair. I'm thinking, how do, you get, how do you get anybody to go to bed with you dressed like well, that? But he was. I can imagine, you can imagine the nicotine stain <laughs> on his fingers. The smell, you know? the smell of his fingers. <laughs> he probably nicked his dad's Vitalis. <laughs> Well, all right, listen, Carl, um, we're going to stop it here because uh, uh, it's coming up to about an hour now. And, uh, it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> it's what? It's it should be the missus will be out of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> She's still in the bar. She's oh, reading, probably, I think. What's she reading? What's she uh, reading? Uh, what's she reading? Well, um, let's see. Um, she reads loads. She reads a lot of stuff. She reads... Um, She's always put me onto different books and I get a different books and she's a big film festival fan. And she just oh, applied, she applied to, um, there was this thing, uh, a Swedish film festival were offering um, one person to go to this island with a lighthouse on it. And this- Wait, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, well, she, she applied for it, she did. Did me, did me so, part. And uh, but she never got to, never, anyway, so thousands of people applied for it. And yeah. uh, evidently you can actually, um, Watch these films or something. It's seven, it was a week of isolation. Yeah, yeah. No, no um, social media. No, no phone. You just go there and you watch sixty yeah, films yeah. and do a do a video diary or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Films, yeah. So that's her, that's what Kath. Uh, she spends November in Leeds. She takes two weeks off and she goes to the Leeds Film Festival and she watches about sixty films over about eight days. She's doing like five films a day and she's a maniac. You know, she's a, she's, she's a, 
my kids, my kids used to call. Is she a potter? She she, she does. She works in porcelain and I she does ceramics it. and stuff. You know, and oh, also no. um, mosaics as well. I love all that. I love all that. I got a friend in Paris, and she's learning that thing of of repairing. You know, where you see all the repair, where it's been uh -huh. repaired. But yeah. um, my kids, my kids, uh, you called me Mr. Blockbuster because we. I used to go to Blockbuster. And I used to get three fucking films out at a time, right? And I remember being in there one day, and the bloke was a bit stroppy to me, and I said, "Oi." Pack it in. I said, I'm probably your best customer. He goes, I doubt that very much. So when you fucking have a look, he went, oh, sorry. <laughs> I, read it so many, I love the films. I love films. Love them. Yeah. Anyway, look. I've got a film to recommend you. Go on. Calm with Horses. Calm with Horses. Okay. Yeah. It's an Irish film. It's about this, uh, it's, a, it's about a minder. He's like a, a hitman. And uh, he's like a heavy, and he works for this like a gang of uh, uh, gypsy guys, these travellers, I think. And um, he's like a, he's got a he's got a, a, an autistic son, a young lad, and him and his wife are having marital difficulties. And and he's basically he's sick of being a hitman. He's sick of being a, a minder because he has to yeah. go around, yeah he has to go around and sort of break into people's houses, beat people up if they're not paying the bills. He's like yeah, a yeah, yeah. And it's and it's basically and it's about his love of uh, animals. He, he, he likes he likes horses, right? And he and he, he likes to. It kind of gives him some peace to be you know out in the field with a horse and just. Sure, sure, and it's, sure. The, the film is it's, it's an amazing film called Calm yeah, with yeah. Horses. Yeah. Came out about two years ago. It did. I'll have a look for it. Nice one. And another one, another musical thing for you, Cal. I've got Out to Lunch by Eric Dolphy. What's that? That's Eric Dolph is a, is a, a, a sax player and a, a flute player, and it's modern jazz. He died. He, he died when he was about forty. And um, is that a film? No, the, 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 it's an album. Out to lunch. Ah, okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Right. Okay, okay. So that's it. And, um, making... <clears throat> right, look. Well, listen. I hope. I hope that we'll we'll kind of see each other in um in the flesh. Hopefully, I'll come and see it. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to talk to Martin anyway. I, I, I chat him, and he's a uh, I met him at um, a funeral. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a nice he's man. A, he's a lovely soul. He really is. And we clicked. We clicked straight away. I mean, we just sat there. I call him Martin Rotten because he's got a voice like Johnny Rotten. He's one of the good guys, isn't he? He's a good. He's a decent man. Yeah. Well, he. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to recommend a, a, a book to your, to, your, to your girlfriend, The Overstory. Okay, The Overstory. It's a really lovely read, The Overstory. All right. Best book I've that by? Yeah. By a guy called uh, Richard Powers. All right, okay. Lovely book. All right, really now, well, listen, thank you very much. Bless you. God bless, bless you. you. And, and uh, uh, yeah, long life. Be well. Yeah, yes. And now... Uh, that song of yours is, is beautiful. You're not alone. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Stunning. Right, and I'll, I'll see you again. God willing, yeah. All Have right, a lovely best, kid. Take care. Ciao. Okay, thanks, Chaz Smash, for coming on the Ego podcast. And thanks to you listeners for tuning in. Chaz is currently working on some new poems. For further details, go to at Cathal Smith, Facebook, Chaz Smash. And you can listen to this again and download this podcast on iTunes, Mick Artistic Ego Podcast. For further links can be found on their website, mickartistic.com. See you on the road and on the waves next time. Bye.